Welcome. Good to see you. Welcome to the Bentley Chronicles. I'm John Carney, pastor at Blue Ridge Baptist Church. And uh, these are the Bentley Chronicles, which are stories about our Westie named Bentley that I think bring alive God's Word. And today we're going to look at two passages of Scripture found in the Bible. If you want to mark those in your Bible real quickly, there's Psalms 139 and Romans 8. Psalms 139 and Romans 8. The title of this week's devotional is Bentley Roaming at Large. First of all, in Psalms 139, we find David talking in verses 13 and 14 about us, about you. He says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And then if you look down in Romans, or look all the way in the New Testament, in Romans chapter 8, verses 15, 16, and 17. Paul says this, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in His sufferings, in order that we may also share in His glory. Now, today takes us back to the very beginning of our relationship with, uh, with Bentley. It all began this way. Uh, one morning, my daughter was on the way to work. She was in college at the time, but while she was going to college, she was also working, and so she was on the way to her job, and she heard on the radio that they had found a West Highland Terrier roaming at large in Otauga County. The humane, humane shelter had found him. Now, Otauga County is just to the, the west of us here where we live. And uh, so I was at church, and suddenly at church I got a phone call, and the phone call was short to the point, and that is, can we get him? Well, what did I do? Well, I did what every dad does, and that is delay, delay, delay. At the time, I thought we already had a wonderful dog. His, his name was Bandit. He was a Border Collie mix, great dog, fun dog. But my daughter Morgan had always had in her heart to have a small little, little dog that might sit more in your lap. And uh, Westy's not too much smaller, but a little bit smaller and a little bit more of a lap dog. And so I began to think in my head, we already have one dog. Do we really need two? And so I came up with a typical dad answer, and that was this. Listen, I've got a whole bunch of stuff to do today. And that was true. But as soon as I finish it all, I will go down to Otago County, the humane shelter. And if this Westie is still there, I'll get him. But inside, probably in my mind, I was thinking and hoping, well, maybe some good, wonderful other family will adopt this, adopt this dog before I get there. Well, sure enough, I finished all the things I had that day, and I was going to go home and then go down to the shelter to make at least my token effort. And when I got home, what did I find? I found a West Island Terrier at our house. And that's how Bentley came to our home. Now, how did he become Bentley? Well, my daughter went and looked up a whole bunch of Scottish names. She wrote them on little pieces of paper. She put them in a hat. She stirred it up. And when she pulled it out, it came up with Bentley, and it fit. Uh, Bentley looked like Bentley, and uh, he's been Bentley ever since. Now, he has been ours for over 10 years now, and he is a special dog. And uh, wherever we go, and Bentley goes with us everywhere, people stop just to look at him. They stop to talk to him. They stop to pet him or talk about him. And uh, he is just a patient dog, just an easygoing dog, a friendly dog. Now, he's a good-looking dog, too. He looks like a uh, little, little bear, but he's just a special dog. Now, last fall, my wife Jackie and I uh, went on a trip. We hadn't been on a trip in a long time uh, by ourselves. We've been on youth trips and things, but not, uh, not just for us. And so we went to Pigeon Forge. 
And we had a great time. The weather was beautiful. It's a fun place to go. We had a great time. And what do you do when you go to Pigeon Ford? Well, if you're married, you have a wife, this is what you do. You walk around a lot of places, you look at things, and you shop. And that's what you do. And you also get to know a lot of people because there are a whole bunch of people doing the same thing. There's a lot of folks there. Well, on day two of our trip, everybody knew us. Well, I should say nobody knew me, but everybody knew Bentley. We'd be walking down the sidewalk, and across the street, I'd hear someone calling out Bentley's name. Hey, Bentley, what you doing today? And we'd go into a shop, and people would come up behind me and ask how Bentley was that day and reach down and pet him. In fact, by the end of the trip, we are convinced that if May Bentley wanted to, he could run for mayor and win in Pigeon Forge. In fact, we're praying about uh, getting a campaign together before it's too late. And so if you hear Bentley's name on CNN, don't be surprised. But people ask me all the time, how did Bentley become Bentley? How did he become Bentley? Well, I have two answers for that. One is that God created him that way. God made him that way. Uh, only God can make a dog that cute. He is a good-looking fella. And, uh, and God created him that way. But he he's also has a gentle spirit, and that was given by God. He's also incredibly loyal, just a loyal dog. And, and when I'm told, Westies are bred that way, or most Westies are. But unlike other Westies, unlike other Westies, sometimes they're very loyal to their own owners and their family, but a little standoffish to anybody else. That's not Bentley. Bentley has never met a stranger. He loves everybody he runs into, and he's so patient and so kind. Now, but there's more to it than that. Bentley not only was created by God like that, but also there's a second reason why Bentley's the way he is. And why is that? And that's because Bentley has a loving family. He is loved unconditionally by my wife Jackie and me and our whole family. Now, I remember the first day that I met Bentley. He was always a good-looking pup, but I remember looking eyes. And Bentley, uh, uh, Bentley looked scared. And you know, I don't even like to think about it, but uh, Bentley was abandoned. Somebody either put him out on the street or he got lost and nobody went looking for him. And in fact, they really ran it on the radio that, uh, that there was a Westie in that uh, humane shelter. And what that means is if Bentley did get lost, nobody went looking for him. Nobody went to go pick him up. Now, roaming at large sounds kind of cute, but it's not. It's horrible. Bentley was on his own. That means he had to fend for himself. He had to find water for himself. He had to find something to eat, which means he either had to kill it or he had to steal it. And, you know, they had to break your heart. Even a dog, I think a dog has feelings. And to be thrown out in the street like that. And so when Bentley came to us, he was not like the Bentley we know today. In fact, it took a while. It took a while. He had to experience the love of our family. He had to be, uh, uh, be fed every day by me. He had to be given water every day. He had to be played with, petted. And just the mere fact of every day waking up and seeing us there, bit by bit, he slowly became the Bentley that we know today. The one truth I know is that Bentley's loved. Now, how can you tell that? You can tell that Bentley's loved in several ways. One is that Bentley goes wherever we go. And he sits, when we're driving in the car, he sits in the back seat. And one day my wife discovered that it's hotter in the back seat than it is in the front. And so we, she started to thinking that Bentley's hot back there. And so Bentley's the only dog that I know that has his own personal fan in the back seat. We want to make sure Bentley's comfortable. And not only that, about four years ago when Bentley got his lung disease, uh, for in order for him to keep going, it takes a whole big mix of medications. And Bentley wants to go, he wants to do, but the only way he can keep going if that medicine gets into him. And he takes about eight different kinds of medicines, and he has to take them all systematically throughout the day. And every morning when I wake up, first thing I do is get Jackie's coffee ready, and then I go and start working on those meds for the day. I line them all up, 
and when he needs to take them, I have to cut them in different sizes and shapes and all kinds of things and line it up for the day. And each day I plan when he's getting what he's getting. Why? Because we love him. He knows that we care about him. And in fact, Bentley trusts us. In fact, Bentley will let me do just about anything to him now because he knows that we love him. And because he knows that love, it has made him into what he is today. Because he knows that love, he can shine with all that God has given to us. And because he knows that love, he can do what? He can love other people. And he loves anybody that comes into his path. Now, you know, the same is true of all of us. Why are you special? And you need to know that you are special. You're special. Why? Because God created you. What does David say? I agree with David. He says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. When God created you, he made you special. And there's something about you that needs to shine. What is that? Maybe it's your personality. Maybe it's your sense of humor. Maybe it's your smarts or your talent. There's something within you that needs to shine. Why? Because God created you that way. You're a special person. But you know what? You can never really shine until the second thing is true. Just like Bentley. And that is that you need to have a personal relationship with the Creator. Literally, you need to become a son or daughter of God. In fact, that's what Romans 8 is all about. Romans 8 is the adoption chapter. And uh, because you can never be everything God wants you to be until you can look at God and call him what? Call him Abba, Father. And what does that mean? That means my Father. Do you belong to the family of God? You know, that's why Jesus came. Jesus came so you would have the chance to know what? To know forgiveness to know God's love and grace. And, uh, uh, and, and why does God want to do that? Why does he want to forgive you? Why does he want to save you? So that you can be in relationship to him. So you can be in the family of God and so that you can know his love firsthand. Now, how does Bentley know our love? He stays close to us. He will follow my wife, Jackie, anywhere. And what does Bentley do when I leave the house? Bentley sits by the window and he waits till I come home. Why? Because he has found that life is at its very best when you stay close to the one who loves you the most. And is that what you're doing? Life will only be at its very best when you stay close to the one who loves you above all other, and that's your Heavenly Father. Let me have a word of prayer for you today. Dear Lord, for all those that are hearing uh, this devotional today, Lord, if there's anyone that has not experienced your love and your forgiveness, give them the courage to reach out to you right now and, and to call on you and to ask for forgiveness and the chance to be a part of your family so they can know your love. And Lord, for all the rest of us who have already chosen you as our Savior, sometimes along the way we just kind of uh, draw back and help them to realize that life will never be full and satisfying. They'll never be able to shine until they live every day following you. Help them to draw close to you so they can know your blessings and so they can make a difference in this world and live an abundant life. Bless each and every one of them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Hope to see you next week. God bless you.